Everybody, welcome live to the Jim Masters Show, live entertainment lifestyle celebrity talk show series. Jim Masters here in the host chair reporting for duty as always, coming to you from the New York area in the United States. And what a pleasure it is to have you here. Thanks for watching, tuning in, loving and supporting what we're doing here at the Jim Masters Show live series. Everybody watching right now from all around the world, we greet you wherever you're watching in the United States, Canada, Mexico, North America, South America, Europe, Asia, Africa, Australia, New Zealand. We hear from all points of the globe. We welcome you and thanks for stopping by our show. And guess what? We have something very special. Somebody very special that's joining us. Look who's joining us here on the show. This is her debut performance or debut conversation, interview, whatever you want to call it. It's a little of everything. We are so excited to have Aid Carlin here. She, of course, is a brilliant Irish singer, songwriter, performer extraordinaire, and she is with Celtic Woman. Now, you know, we've got a wonderful friendship with the ladies of Celtic Woman. I've interviewed just about all of them over the years on PBS, and they've been guests here on the Jim Masters Show Live series as well. And I've known the ladies of Celtic Woman ever since Celtic Woman was created 20 years ago, I cannot believe, and when they first came over to America for their very first public television special, and have stayed in touch with all of the fabulous ladies, past and present, and it's been a glorious, uh, glorious relationship, and they're so giving and kind and supportive of this show, but also of their fans and the incredible music that they deliver. I know a lot of people love Celtic Woman, and it's easy to see why, because they're very talented, beautiful inside and out ladies, and they just really... If you go to one of their concerts, they knock it out of the park. Right now, they are touring America, and it's city after city. They're seeing from coast to coast all points of the United States on their 20th anniversary tour. That is so hard to believe. I cannot believe when I say 20 years has gone by with the incredible Celtic woman cast and the musicians and producers and performers. It's really amazing. So Raid is joining us. Very first time here on the show and not the last. And matter of fact, she is in the Midwest right now. They're in Indiana. They're going to be hitting the stage tonight at the time of this show right now. Then they're headed off to uh, Milwaukee in the next day or so. And so they're all over the place. So to get this window of opportunity to chat with our friend, Ray, uh, is really a blessing. So we're going to have a good time. Just to remind you, too, that again, Celtic Woman is on their anniversary tour. And they also have, in addition to tickets still available to the cities that they are continuing to tour and enjoy as they celebrate 20 years of Celtic Woman, their amazing album is out and available as well. And I encourage you to pick that up. Something very, very special. It's going to be a collector's item. Uh, as far as Celtic Woman's concerts, you're probably saying, have I been there? Yes, many of them over the years, but most notably the one that was just a couple of weeks ago at the beautiful and well-known Mohegan Sun Arena, Arena, which was really something quite special. And there we are with the ladies. <laughs> and this was very, very special. This was backstage after we had an opportunity to see them just knock it out of the park. And uh, what a great show. Just telling you personally, being at the 20th anniversary concert was something very, very special. And again, if they're coming to a city near you, grab those tickets quickly because you're going to have an opportunity to see something very, very special. Their voices are, are dynamic. Their performances are dynamic. They're fabulous wardrobes dynamic, but also the setting, you know, the staging, the lighting, the musicianship, the dancers. I mean, for this 20th anniversary, they are pulling out all the stops. Matter of fact, here's some shots from the Mohegan Sun concert and take a look. You see what I see? Packed house, thousands of people there. And that's what's happening. So you want to get your tickets quickly because it's something very, very special. It is the 20th anniversary of Celtic Woman. These are actual shots that I took right there. And again, look at the packed house. They are selling out everywhere they go, uh, which is beautiful. And it's easy to see why. But uh, these are some personal shots I took that I'm sharing with you here on the Gym Masters show. We also shared on social media at Gym Masters TV on Facebook, X, and Instagram. There's Maraid, beautiful gown, fabulous voice. And, and after each performance, uh, because they they just really turn on the juice so beautifully. Um, 
everybody was on their feet. I mean, just really clapping and celebrating. And it's a lively show, but also a very moving show as well. There's some beautiful ballads and some lively tunes. They kick up their heels and they put on an extraordinary performance, folks. So again, and look at that. That is almost angelic. <laughs> that is uh, Mairead and our special guests. And just the way that shot came out, it is quite angelic. And uh, the whole thing is, I mean, they really are very, very special. And we're excited to have them here. So just sharing a couple of quick photos here with all of you of one of the moments. The Look at that shot there, too. That is Mairead, a very special guest joining us. Um, sharing these personal photos with you of the actual concert events, sort of like what you will see yourself. This is just before when they were setting things up on the stage. I mean, just the lighting, the performances are absolutely incredible. And you know, they have a fantastic time when they're doing it as well. So they play with the audience. Uh, they talk to the audience. So uh, you're going to have a good time. And here's one other older shot. This was actually through PBS. And Maraid is right there next to me. And some of the other ladies, of course, that you may recognize. Uh, the, sort of the previous. The, there's been several, you know, different iterations of Celtic Woman. But this is one of the times through PBS where I had an opportunity to chat with the ladies. And I believe I welcomed them on stage that night uh, on behalf of public television as well. But this is the most recent at the Mohegan Sun concert, and it was very, very special. So with all that said and all those photos going down memory lane there, and that was just a couple of weeks ago, some of those photos, it is time to welcome our very, very happy guest. <laughs> as she takes a few minutes out of her busy day, getting ready to hit the stage, Ray Carlin is joining us here from Indianapolis, USA, from the heartland. Hey, Marie, welcome to the show, my friend. It's good to see you again. It was just a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> I know. Oh, I was loving all those photographs that you were showing because I hadn't seen a lot of them. So thank you so much for sharing them because it was really cool to see it from the audience's perspective. And yeah, what a night. That was so fun. Unbelievable. And you know, you guys, right, exactly. You're so busy doing what you do. You're on the road, you're singing, you're performing. And then you, I remember that night when we were together at Mohegan Sun and you guys performed as part of the 20th anniversary celebration tour. You know, we got a chance to chat behind the scenes. And then right after that, you guys had to load up, you know, the big bus and head over to West Point, New York, because you had a concert the next day. So you guys are really hitting the road, a lot of cities. And how does it feel to be uh, as part of this 20th anniversary celebration of what is now an iconic group, Celtic Woman? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of a pinch me kind of um, thing. You know, I joined Celtic Woman. It was crazy. I actually look back. I joined Celtic Woman just in 2013. So I've actually been with the group now coming on 11 years, even though I took a tiny little break during COVID, but I sort of never really feel like I left because there was nothing really going on in COVID. <laughs> Not um, at all. So I say I took a break, but I think everybody took a break during COVID. <laughs> they did. They baked a lot of bread during COVID. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I joined on the 10th anniversary. So sort of similar to what you were saying, you can't believe that it's the 20th anniversary. Neither can I. I mean... I personally feel like I have grown up in this group and it's funny because it really does feel like coming home and for me I feel so privileged to be even a small part of this group this legacy you know and before me there was 10 years before me um and there were those incredible women that started this whole yeah. thing and nobody ever really knew in that moment that it was going to last 20 years but i think that's a testament to the women that have been involved over the years and i always say have passed the baton you know they've made way for other people to come through um but also i think because of the honesty and the music and i think that's sort of what people really resonate with more than anything is the fact that you know to sound like an old fogey in a world um where music is kind of spoon fed to us and um you know it's a lot of sort of algorithms and all those things mm -hmm. that we talk about i think we are trying to stay true to the essence of what storytelling is all about and to try and still stay connected to people because at the end of the day at the end of 
the record player at the end of Spotify, at the end of YouTube, there are real people that still want to feel moved in some kind of way. Which is really, really beautiful. And you mentioned the timing of when you uh, joined the cast of this iconic group, Celtic Woman. Tell us a little bit earlier about sort of your journey to becoming a fabulous member of this iconic group. Tell us about some of those early days for you growing up. Um, when did you realize you wanted to perform, you wanted to be an entertainer, you wanted to be a singer, a vocalist? Were you doing that when you were a kid? <laughs> <laughs> I very much was. Actually, I have a memory. One of my earliest memories was when I was four and I was sitting at the bottom of my mom and dad's bed and my mom just said to me, do you want to go to singing and drama lessons? And I remember bawling my eyes out crying, which is a really unusual thing for a four-year-old to do. Like that, I would have that much awareness of like what I sort of, loved and so from that moment I think I knew that that was my calling it's a very weird thing to say like at four but I really did just know and when I say singing lessons I mean that very loosely it was on a Saturday morning I would go hang out with other kids my age and we would sing Disney songs together but that is what it's all about you know and actually I, I also teach singing um when I'm not on the road and um I get so many parents asking you know if they can start with me and I say, please wait until they're like 10 or 11. Um, if you can, between like the age of four and 10, try and send them to like a community thing where they're around other kids. And I think it's far too young to have one-on-one -on -one lessons. My whole experience was being with other friends and singing together and just having fun. Um, but I think, you know, I always sort of, uh, there's a thing in Ireland called Fashes where it's like competition. So every mm -hmm. year you would go, you'd probably heard of the page. Yeah. Um, you would go and you would compete. And I remember there was one year, I think I was 41 competitions. It was ridiculous for <laughs> Yeah, from like piano to like recorder, to recorder duet, to recorder trio, saxophone, singing duets, like it was everything. Um, so music was just massive, but I think the turning point for me was when I was 15 and I entered a competition called BBC Talent and mm. there were 35,000 children that entered that year and um, I ended up getting the female lead. So yeah, I my first ever professional, full professional experience was going to Abbey Road and recording with the BBC Concert Orchestra for an opera. Not too shabby for the very first <laughs> taste of this, huh? <laughs> You know, and I got to live home at 15 for like six weeks. And yeah, I was just like, okay, this actually could be a career. Like I can actually do this for the rest of my life. How do I do that? So I went back to school for the next couple of years, studied really hard, got my grades and then got into music college. But like my dad was a bass player, you know, and he just always was so zen and so cool and always kind of, yeah, kind of. He he always sort of steered myself and my sister towards what we wanted to do. Like he never mm. pushed any ambitions on us. Um, but yeah, and then I went to music college. Hated it. <laughs> you did, yeah. <you? laughs> well, it's not that I hated it. I actually loved certain aspects of it. I loved some of my teachers. Um, there was one teacher in particular that I just loved her. She was really eccentric, and I'm very drawn to eccentric people. So we became very good friends um but i just knew i didn't want to do classical music i knew i loved folk music and classical ish stuff with that but not full on opera um and so i was very lucky to get signed at 21 to universal records so um, <laughs> yeah when other people were sort of trying to figure out what they were going to do after college you were already they, yeah already knew that I had a record deal yeah it's so it wasn't as easy as that though believe me I know it sounds like I just had this kind of plain sailing um there was a lot of trenches to go through as well in the midst of all of that including getting dropped from said record label and having to find my feet again but again I think that these things kind of shape you you know and they make you stronger yeah 
They really, really do. I mentioned that you trained in vocal performance at the Trinity Levon Conservatory of Music and Dance in London. Then when you graduated, offered that postgraduate scholarship in musical theater at the Royal Academy of Music. But then the record deal, Decker, came along. You also continued to train with Mary Hammond and Simon Lee. And in addition to all of this, you performed for the president of Ireland, celebrating the Irish anthem for the England-Ireland Rugby International to an audience of millions. And you hail from Northern Ireland, the beautiful uh, town of Derry. What was that like singing for the president of Ireland? <laughs> You've had some great experiences, my friend. <laughs> no, and sometimes you really don't take it for granted because I think in those moments you do realize like not a lot of people get to do that. Um, but I think, and I don't know if you'll agree with me, with, you know, with a lot of the artists that, um, you know, you talk to, but we all have a little bit of imposter syndrome. It's like, why me? There's so many more talented people out there than me. Why me? Um, but, you know, something like that is a tr true on, and especially being in Celtic Woman and from Celtic Woman, you know, we do see ourselves in many ways as ambassadors for Ireland because most of the time we spend over here in the States um, singing to communities of people who resonate to Ireland and with Ireland. So that was just one of those moments that I don't think you'll ever sort of truly feel. It was just an incredible experience, to be honest. And I wore a little green dress and I had shamrocks on it. And it was, it was, it was, yeah. It was a vibe. <laughs> that was uh, a pinch me moment for sure, right? It was. Yeah. You uh, you also shared the stage with Snow Patrol and the priests at the 2013 BBC TV gala concert, Sons and Daughters, to mark Derry's year as City of Culture. You recorded the City of Culture anthem, Let the River Run, and Glee star, good friend of ours, Damien McGinty as well. How cool is that, huh? Yeah, he's an absolute darling i always say there couldn't be a nicer person on this earth that deserves more success than than damien he's just a gentleman um and you know we've just had such a lovely constant friendship for you know since the city of culture and it's been amazing for me to watch him just grow and flourish and to become the artist that he is today he's just He's a legend, as we say. <laughs> yes, and he competed not that long ago in uh, what is it, Ireland's Got Talent, and hey. the dance competition and all. And uh, Or is it, uh, no, Ireland's like Dancing with the Stars version, I think it, it was. It was. It was Dancing yeah, with the Stars. Yeah, with the Stars. And that he had to really get into, you know, he's in good shape, but it really had to get into extra good shape because the competition is so fierce and physical. And even what you guys do, there's a lot of physicality. You're dancing, you're jumping, you're running around, you're, you're going, you know, behind the scenes and then back out on stage. And there's a lot of movement, a lot of working parts to what you're doing. Um, a ton of physicality in the work that you do, not just vocally, but just the moving around on stage, right? How do you, trained for that how do you keep yourself in tip-top shape physically vocally so you can take on all these concerts not just when it's a 20th anniversary tour but even when you're just out on tour normally performing yeah like it's it's definitely a lot of dedication um like for example i was up at half seven this morning and i made sure i had my coffee and my little breakfast bar and then i went down to the gym and i you know did my run and stuff and it's definitely for me it's just as much to keep my head in the right place as, as it is my body but um you know, a lot on endurance um we're right now we're on six shows a week and um there's no space for partying or letting your hair down not that i would be into that anyway to be honest i'm not really that kind of girl like you know listen give me a nice dinner and a glass of wine and a bit of shopping and i'm happy i don't need to <laughs> go out and you know throw that sounds shopping. good <laughs> that's what, more what i'm into and may you know after the show i would always opt for a cup of tea and some chocolate as opposed to you know anything else but um yeah like you know and also something that i am really really incredibly aware of particularly since covid is that people are struggling across the world they don't yeah. have a lot of 
And so if they're choosing to spend their money to come see our show and we're not taking it seriously, we're disrespecting them. So for me, I'm like, I'm in that bed, I'm trying to sleep as much as possible, I'm drinking water and steaming and yeah, just looking after myself, you know, it's, it's, um, it's too important not to, and our fans are too important for us to, um, to not take it seriously. Yeah. You know, and just some great shots here. Talk about the physicality I mean, of the dancing and they've got the dancers. The musicians are fantastic and you all have a lot of fun with each other yeah. and with the audience. If, if people have never seen a Celtic woman concert or performance and they think it's just coming out and just singing, just singing Danny Boy and when Irish eyes are smiling and that's all there is. It's completely different than just that folks. It's very, very immersive and you are immersed with the audience too. You guys chat with the audience, laugh with the audience, chat and laugh with each other. Then you tease the musicians and there's a lot of fun in the concerts as much as there are these brilliant songs that are expertly and beautifully performed, right? Yeah, it is. There's a lot of physicality. We definitely like to have fun. We like to engage with the audience. I said it last night, actually, that we had a great audience last night. Not that every audience is amazing and they're all different, but just some audiences you just sort of feel a little bit more from. And last night was one of those. And there was one last week as well where people were just like sort of up on their feet and they were dancing and they were screaming. And I, we, I came off stage and I said to the girls, I was like, Gareth, I think this is the closest that we'll ever feel to what Elvis Presley felt. <laughs> um, you know, because it's so nice when people yeah. are engaged. Oh, it, sure. It, yeah, it can get a bit raucous sometimes, and we yeah. don't mind that. <laughs> exactly right. You kick up the heels, you have a good time, yeah. a lot of Irish crack, as uh, we call it, which is what it's all about. I want to let people know, too, they might not know this, that you had an opportunity to also perform uh, in Los Angeles at the Oceana Benefit concert with Hillary Clinton and Ted Danson, which is amazing. And you toured the UK and Ireland with legendary American singer songwriter, Don McLean, including a sold out concert at the Royal Albert Hall. How cool is that, huh? Oh, I mean, again, there are just moments that you kind of go, did I really do that? In fact, I was going through my my dad's Facebook the other day, um, and I sort of like going back looking at like little things that he said. Um, he, I, we lost him six years, seven years ago. No. I um, so I was going through his Facebook, and I he had posted or he had re-shared way back a, a picture of that night, and I thought I didn't have any photographs. I thought I had one photograph, but he somehow, you know, shared another one. But um, yeah, that was beautiful. He was a lovely man i remember there were, he uh asked to see me um for one of the sound checks and i was like oh god is he going to let me go does he not want me supporting him anymore <laughs> you know like all these things and he's like right i just want to give you some advice because i feel like it's my duty to get, you know to pass on any kind of little thing that i can to young artists and i was like oh thank god he's not letting me go um but he said it's what you do in the times when you're not busy and when you're not working and you're not performing that actually is the most important he was like better yourself learn instruments read like nourish yourself as a person in those times because they are the toughest but they're the they're the places that you will actually grow you're not going to grow when you're out touring doing whatever you're just doing it but it's how you get yourself to that place is what's important and I have never forgotten that. I've never forgotten that, you know. That's the beauty of it, too. You really appreciate what's going on. You appreciate the ride and all the incredible experiences that you've you've had. And um, I also want to let the audience know that um, there is somebody special in your life, uh, singer and dancer, Ronan Scalard. He was a guest on our show with the Trinity Irish Trio with uh, Emmett O'Hanlon, who's a good friend of ours, and the others. But he, uh, there's something with him and Celtic Thunder, right? Yes. So I'm, I'm, and I'm sure uh, there's a lot of Celtic Thunder fans that watch this. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So he was asked uh, just 
gosh, was it like September time? Um, Ryan has decided to take a little break just to look after himself a little bit. And they asked Ronan to come on board and sing with them. And he's just been loving it. You know, he's he feels incredibly lucky and privileged. Um, he's been a big fan of the group for a long time. And it's funny because I, I feel like little worlds coming together. So I would have been really good friends with Damien. And then I also would have known Emmett um, Cahill a little bit. But also Ronan had uh, worked on Trinity with Emmett O'Hanlon as well. He had also been part of Celtic Thunder. So it's almost like full circle. Um, he also was going to set up an orchestra with David Munro back in Ireland, who's the musical director of Celtic Thunder. So there were so many sort of like moving parts that, you know, eventually led to him um, coming in to Celtic Thunder. But yeah, he he's absolutely loving it. He loves the lads. They have great fun. And yeah, we call ourselves the Celtic couple now because who would have thought one guy in Celtic Thunder and another girl in Celtic I Thunder. like that. The Celtic couple. Celtic couple. <laughs> exactly, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because there are a lot of, uh, you know, all the years that I've had really great friendships and relationships with Celtic Woman and the same with Celtic Thunder. Again, all initially through my years hosting uh, on PBS and just getting to know all of you. Um, there is a lot of duality in terms of the fan base that they love Celtic Thunder. I mean, there's distinct people that love Celtic Thunder and that's it. Celtic woman, that's it. There's a lot of cross mingling, and especially those who love Irish culture, Irish tradition, Irish dance and music. And, and that has been something that is a, like a love affair between America and Canada and around the world, but it's in Australia too. But especially here in America, there's this wonderful love affair between uh, Ireland and here and they can't get enough of anything Irish, whether it is like Celtic Woman, Celtic Thunder. When Riverdance first came over and sort of really blew things up for everything Irish. What do you think that is? Uh, this fantastic love of Irish music, culture, everything, food from Ireland, especially here in America. I think it starts with the people. I think people just really like Irish people. Um, I think we uh, are just very humble um kind you know at the core of it all and i think that we are um deeply truthful which is something that you know you don't get a lot irish people tell it as it is and i think people really resonate with that but i think more than that it's their heritage um i think a lot of people come from you know irish roots they can trace it way back um, and so there's just like that feeling of the homeland. Whenever they hear our music, they feel drawn to it. Also, there's a lot of people that don't necessarily know that they have a lot of Irish heritage, but they really connect with that music. And there's almost like a like an earthiness and a tribalness that they hear in our music that a lot of people, I remember um, there was one guy, I uh, can't remember where he was from now, but he said, um, our traditional music reminded him so much of their traditional music. It was in Bulgaria, actually. It was when I lived in Bulgaria. Um, so, you know, we travel a little bit and our music kind of just strikes a chord with people and they just sort of love. We also love coming to our shows because, like you said, it's a bit of fun too, but then there's also those real tender moments where we kind of open our soul and um, let people in because that's what music's about really, isn't it? It's about letting people in. That's what it really is, right? It's about letting them in and sharing, you know, these precious moments and, and the music resonates with people in deep ways and deep levels. And if you think about all of the music that Celtic Woman in the 20 years has been responsible for, all of the incredible albums, uh, all the public television specials, all the concerts and events, I think it's something... Uh, quite special it really really is and and for you to be a part again of this very monumental time this this 20th anniversary i saw again having an opportunity to see you guys at the mohegan sun concert where again sold out packed i mean look at that that's a huge that's a massive arena i mean it can fit thousands of people and it was absolutely packed um it, it like you said it is kind of sort of like an elvis sort of moment right i mean to to have all of these people really admire 
each and every one of you, past and present. You mentioned some of the wonderful ladies in the very beginning, the Lisa Kellys and Chloe Agnews and Marie Nesbitts and Orla Fallons and all the greats from the beginning, uh, setting the tone for what you're doing now. It, it, there is a lot of tradition and heritage involved with Celtic woman. And it's uh, something that I know you take deeply and you preserve and you celebrate, right? Yeah, it's really important to us, especially because the woman started this. And then there's other women that have come through as well. That You know, like I was a fan of Celtic woman before I joined. I think that's really, really important for people to know. Like I grew up, I, I mean this very loosely when I say grew up, I mean like from the age of like 14 onwards. Um, but I watched the YouTube you know, channel like everybody else did. I hoped and dreamed that I would um, one day be a part of it. Never thought that I would, but you know, there was people that I really looked up to as well, like Lynn Hillary. Uh, Lynn Hillary for me, Lisa Lamb, um, Susan, like there have been so many incredible women. Alex Alex Sharp and yeah. Her, Hayley Westerner. I mean, all these iconic women that have come through this show you know, and then I have some of my best friends that I've ever made. And I met my husband, you know, Ava McMahon. She was my bridesmaid. I was her bridesmaid. You know, we text each other constantly. It's a real family and oh, I'm just so lucky. So when I was asked to come back, you know, I was, I jumped at the chance. I really did. I jumped at it. And uh, the newest uh, member joining you, Emma Warren, too, who was fabulous, fabulous voice and personality uh, joining. And you guys have welcomed her into the fold. Um, and I think that's a beautiful thing, right? You, yeah. you are yeah. like sisters, aren't you? You're not, as Your colleagues, your professional performers, singers, musicians, but... You're also like sisters that you get close, especially all the time you spend together traveling and in the studio. There's a bond. There's a, in this case, a sisterhood like uh, with Celtic Woman, isn't there? You're so right. And we're actually so blessed to have Emma because it's the first time in history that, well, in terms of the dancing, because we know that uh, previous singers have also done river dance that have come into Celtic Woman, but it's the first time that we've actually incorporated the dance element uh, into Celtic Woman. Emma was lead dancer in River Dance. She's one of the best dancers I've ever come across and singers. She's like what we what we call in theater is she's a triple threat. <laughs> she's got the singing, the dancing and the acting. And to top it all off, she's just an absolutely beautiful person. She's so gentle and kind and yeah, like just a beautiful fit for the group. And, it makes me excited for the future of this group and the show that, you know, I get to work with even more incredibly talented people. I pinch myself every night. There's a beautiful song in the show that um, that Emma and Mern sing together called Shannon, which was written by our new musical director, Brian Byrne, um, with his wife. And it's just it's an incredible song. Yeah, very moving. <laughs> It really is. And I get to stand side stage every night before I go on and just listen to that. And that, I mean, how lucky am I? I get a front row seat every night. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what's cool. You guys really support one another. Like when somebody is uh, performing a solo, uh, you guys are clapping and, and lifting each other up, which I think is really terrific. You can see when watching, whether it's uh, you know on television or on stage, that there is a real bond, a friendship, a camaraderie between all of you. And it's a, it's a family, it's a team, it's a nucleus. You're all uh, preserving the Celtic woman name, the franchise, the brand, the image, the, the mission of it all. But at the same time, and you have your own individual ways of expressing yourself. But when you come together, it's, uh, it's very powerful and people are very moved by it. And I'm sure that intensity you can really feel as you're performing, right? The, the love from the audience and just everything that uh, the group stands for. Again, you all have your own extraordinary individual careers, solo performances, solo careers. And then, but when you come together as this formation of Celtic woman, there's a lot of power on that stage, isn't there? 
Yeah, there really is. And I, I do, for me, the friendship part is a massive, a massive part of um, being in Celtic Women. Um, you know, when we have that bond, and that's something that I actually really missed in the couple of years that I um, had out my own treading through the waters. Um, I really missed being able to look left and right and know that I had the support of other women, you know, in things like Danny Boy, where like say, for example, and it happens if one night vocally you're feeling tired, you're not feeling good. I know that I can look at Emma, I can look at Murrin and get the support from Tara. I'll look them in the eye and they'll know and they'll give me a look back. And it just, it's like those unspoken things that are invaluable as an artist, you know, and yeah, I just love it. I just absolutely love what I do, Jim. I really do. You know, it's, it's very, very obvious. And uh, you also, uh, you know, you have your own solo work too, right? There's things that you do on a solo basis because you are, you know, a professional performer, singer, vocalist. And um, tell us about some of the things that you do uh, from a solo perspective as well, Mar yeah, like it's for me being creative is really important. And um, not that we don't, we are very creative within Celtic Women, but it's also nice to kind of have something of your own as well outside of it. So that was kind of my in, in those couple of years was to kind of maybe find my own sound again. Um, because I had come from being signed to Universal and then I went straight into Celtic Women, my identity very much became being a part of this group, which is an honor, but yeah. I also think it's really important to rediscover yourself, especially that I joined and I'm giving away my age now, but I don't care. My mom's always saying, why do you tell people your age? And I'm like, I'm proud of it. I'm proud of it. So I joined Celtic Woman when I was 23 and then I took the break when I was 33. There's a lot of growing up to do and a lot of self-discovery in, in that time. You know, it's a big difference between being 23 and being 33, um, artistically and on a human level. Um, so, I just sort of want to challenge myself a little bit and to learn how to cook for myself again. And you know, because the thing is we turn up and everything's done for us. We are so lucky. We Our turn schedule's done for us. We're told where to go. Catering's down here, you know? And then, so for me, I thought it was really important to just like strip everything back and have to earn from the ground up again, you know? Um, so within that, was making my own music again, writing. I've been writing a lot, um, writing with an incredible um, songwriter called Chris Eaton, who I'm sure you'll have heard many of his songs, but he wrote Amy Grant's Breath of Heaven. Mm. Um, so he's been wonderful and uh, a great mentor. I also signed a publishing contract with um, Stuart Ongley, who has looked after Cliff Richard for, I mean, the longest time I think ever since Clifford had started Stuart has been um looking after him and it took me a long time to get there uh emotionally I had an experience that I'm I'm not going to talk about um I can't talk about but uh it sort of scarred me in the music industry yeah. a little bit and it just took me a long time to trust somebody with my art again and yeah Stuart was just the perfect person just a real gentleman gentle soul uh industry veteran and yeah i feel so blessed that you know i got to you know sign to him but yeah and i released a song um with brendan graham who wrote you raise me up mm. and, and i love hope a lot of celtic woman songs he wrote a gorgeous song called orphan girl and um i recorded that with the european recording orchestra which is an orchestra that my husband runs in bulgaria um, so it was a full orchestra, so he did the orchestration for it. So yeah, I'm doing lots of stuff. I also um, work with Daniel O'Donnell, the great Daniel O'Donnell. Oh yeah, know him very well from public television. Tell him I said hello, yeah. Well, yeah. So yeah, I did his show there in Ireland. So bits and pieces, but right now I'm focusing on enjoying Celtic Woman and, you know, doing bits outside of it as well, but trying to live in the moment and not think about what's next because that's something that we all are very we all do and it's very hard to kind of undo that but I'm really right. trying I'm being very mindful this time around to not kind of always think of the next thing to just sort of live in it because you know this life is short and precious yeah and it 
And we've learned that. All of us have learned that too, over the, especially the last couple of years. We learned that from everything that's gone on, you know? Um, and that's something, you know, the, the pandemic and everything, it's something that we've all had an opportunity to learn from. And um, so it sounds like you had an opportunity to take a lot of that and learned it and you're growing with it, like a different perspective on life, which is, I think, something that we've all experienced, uh, a different perspective on, you know, how things are so precious and so important in our lives. So um, I think your picture might've froze there. <laughs> Maybe your um, your phone went out of battery. If you, if it froze, you can always come, yeah, you can always come in out of the studio and then come back in and we'll get you back in. Um, we're talking with Mairead Carlin from Celtic Woman and you guys have been commenting. She'll, she'll come back into the studio. Sometimes if they're, phone runs out of battery. I think she's on a phone because they're literally in between performances. She's going to be on stage with the ladies. They're in Indiana right now as they're continuing their 20th anniversary tour, which is amazing. This is her first time on our show. And uh, we're going to have her, of course, back multiple times, but she's, uh, she's coming back into the system here. There she is. <laughs> Now, now, we don't have the sound. We don't hear you. We see you. Hello. There you are. That's what I happens just, when I you're just, you know me. You, I just vamped. You know, I just filled yeah. in the blanks. Just, you know, don't forget the tour. And, you know, she's having a great time. She's uh, in a hotel room in Indiana. And, you know, <laughs> unstable internet, but nothing I could control, unfortunately. It's all, <laughs> there's only so much you can do. What is it um, like? putting a tour like this together and each night because everything is just, you know, dissembled and taken apart. And then you got to go to the next city and you rehearse mm -hmm. and you do it again. What is that process? Like people probably be fascinated to know what it's actually like putting this kind of massive concert tour together, but also each night as you go from city to city, how do you keep the energy, the stamina, and what are some things you guys do behind the scenes as you're preparing to get out there and knock it out of the park on stage? I mean, there's a lot of moving parts before this even gets on the road. There's months and months and months of preparation from set designers, you know, going through multiple different uh, prototypes to see what will actually be movable. Because, like, a lot of people don't really know this, but in order to have a show like ours that we cover a lot of ground, I think on this tour, we're doing over, I think it's close to 90 shows. Um, having a having a set that is movable is so important because years ago, they would have had the big drapes and all that, but right. it was very expensive to move around and also not very practical. So over the years, we've tried to sort of maybe make it a little bit more so that we can go to more places and bring the show to more people. So that's been a really sort of a big focus of the last kind of while is making sure that we can bring the show to as many people as possible. Um, so yeah, there's all of that that like, I don't know anything about really. That's all to do with the producers, our wonderful producer, Rona. She, big shout out to her. She's doing an incredible job. Um, and then down to like the music, finding out, you know, who is, going to be looking after the music um going in and putting stuff down and you know recording stuff seeing if it fits in our voice um you know how it's going to work live um there's so many things and then when we're out in the road we have an incredible crew who pack up so they're the first ones in in the morning they're in 7 a.m the last ones to leave at night they're out of there half 11 11 30 and they're back up doing the same thing the next day. So, you know, we wouldn't be here without them, the career, everything. There was a, we had an old merch guy, Fez, uh, who he actually now owns the company that does our merch. Um, so he's a great guy, but he was with us for a long time. You probably met him. And he said, one of his t-shirts used to say, love the band, respect the crew. And I just think that's so great because, you know, we all work together. We all right. work in tandem. Without the crew, there would be no show. Without the talent, there would be no need for the crew to do the show. So 
we're all just as much a part of it as each other. Which is, again, what makes the wheels turn and everything, you know, sort of come together. Um, for you, you know, there's always these fun, crazy moments sometimes that happen backstage, on the bus, what have you. Are there some moments that stand out for you, uh, whether they're comedic moments or something, that uh, <laughs> crazy moments that happen as you are putting these great shows together? <laughs> There's always funny moments. One that sticks out in mind, there was a guy, um, he was in the choir called Josh, and he was a lovely guy. He's actually an incredible actor. He's just studying at the Bristol Old Vic um, now. He was training to be a lawyer at the time he joined Celtic Woman and just completely had a gear change when he joined this group and realized that it, performing was actually for him. So, um, But there was one night, I'll never forget it. I can't remember whether it was Ronan or Glenn, stood on the back of his shoe and his shoe came off and so he was walking around stage with one shoe on and one shoe off and honestly if I tell you it was so hard to hold it together because we were just laughing so much it was so funny he didn't move he stayed he poker face stayed. but everybody else was laughing <laughs> <laughs> he was a professional yeah. and just did what he had to do right yeah. which sometimes happens do you know what stuff happens you know whether it's a dress you know gets stuck somewhere it shouldn't or um you just you know very elegantly move yourself out of it and then you just continue on but it's live theater so stuff's gonna happen well i asked Maraid nesbitt this and and um and of course tara when you think about what they're doing too with the fiddle with the violin and all the spinning and the long hair how does the hair not get caught in <laughs> the strings I know. and they just have a certain way a certain method to have it not happen not that it has never happened but you know when you're on stage and when you're live things can happen and those are the moments where you rise to the occasion and you you have fun with it and you just roll with it and and that's part oh. of yeah and poor Tara, actually, she wasn't feeling great the other day. And um, she sort of, her legs kind of became a little bit weak under her. I have never seen someone so professional just like sort of find herself again and then like continue playing, you know? And that's the thing. Sometimes these things do happen where, you know, you might not be necessarily feeling well. We don't have understudies. So if we're not feeling well, we have to find it from somewhere to just go out and give a show. Because like I said earlier on, these people have paid a lot of money to come and see the show. And, you know, it's our duty to give them 100%, whether or not we'll, we're feeling 100% or not. So, yeah, it takes a lot of um, depth, you know, like we have to really find it in our core every single night to give everybody what they deserve because it's what they deserve. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And they're excited about it and they come to support. And, and you guys are so wonderful at uh, being so responsive to your fans. And, you know, um, there are, I don't want to give everything away, but there's some moments where you're on stage solo too, and you do some absolutely, that gown is fantastic, but you do some incredible songs on stage during this particular 20th anniversary performance. How did you guys select the songs that we're going to be part of the repertoire, part of the actual event. It's got to be, there's so many Celtic woman songs and, and you weave in others as well, not just what people might predict. You weave in some other surprises, but how did you really come down to be able to select the ones that would be a part of this 20th anniversary tour? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, there's a lot of moving parts that go into that. Um, our new musical director, Brian, um, very much i feel like he really understands me as an artist because i'm a complicated artist in many ways because i love folk music but i also have this classical side to my voice um and so he's really allowed me to show all those elements um we totally vibed off each other um whenever he asked me if i would be interested in singing red as the rose um Typically that I had only ever heard one other version, I think, sung by a female artist. I think um, every other, you know, time that I'd heard it, it was always done by um, 
a guy and so I was intrigued and um we played around with it a little bit and he said you know I know you love Cara Dillon who's a an artist from County Derry and she's really very very folky and he was like just go to Derry just do your total dairy on this just go back home sing in your most authentic self and that's what I want and he just allowed me to play a little bit and like really sort of break through like the sort of shackles of um you know what I should and shouldn't do and he was just like just experiment just like go back to your roots and just sing it like you authentically like Maraid so that was a real joy um and I'm really glad that he allowed me to do that. And I sing in my own sort of native accent, which is lovely and something that you sort of forget to do sometimes. Um, and then Cinema Paradiso was like a total other ball game. It's very much, you know, classical and very much sung. Um, but I still feel like there's also like a, what it, like a, like a silence, like a quietness within that. Like it's not, presented in any way it's very much kind of inward in many ways you know which is hard to do in a song like that but actually it was Lloyd Butler our, our on tour MD who had said about that song um Celtic Woman have never done this song and it, he was baffled by it you know because it's very much in the classical crossover repertoire and he put that song forward so thanks Lloyd for that <laughs> absolutely yes and you knock it uh, I say that a lot knock it out of the park it really everybody you could hear a pin drop people just so connected with it uh and your extraordinary exquisite voice too the incredible voice that all of you are just so wildly talented and when you do when you're together you hear it but then when you do your solo pieces it's really shines the the vocal prowess the the strength of the voice the the beauty and nuances the tonality you can really see that um you guys you're all in when you're doing it and i think that's so it's amazing and you know folks when you get tickets to go to celtic woman and i've brought a lot of people over the years family friends colleagues to celtic woman concerts everybody is like Oh my God, that's even better than I thought it was be. I didn't have any idea. I saw them on TV or I just, or I've heard the music, but the concerts themselves are quite special and, um, and unique. And I think that's fantastic for somebody who is watching, who hasn't been to one of the concerts for Celtic woman yet. What would they expect? I could talk about it having been there, but what what is it you hope they get and they're left with when they come to one of the concerts? I or the I I think the Wi-Fi, your Wi-Fi, I think is <laughs> the Wi-Fi is becoming no-fi. <laughs> I just made that up. That's very good. That's my Irish way. Um, it, I <laughs> I think you're back, right? Are you back or you, do? You, so it's very. It's the Wi-Fi there and where you are in uh, Indiana. It's uh, a little slow there. The, the Wi-Fi. Can you hear? Up oh, there you go. Whoop. So it's her Wi-Fi. She's in a area there in Indiana where it's kind of you see the little circle there. She'll come back. We have just a couple minutes left too because she has to go to hair and makeup as they get ready to prepare for tonight's concert. So we've got just a couple minutes left with Maraid. Um, it's her Wi-Fi. There, there we go. And then usually psh, that's what happens. And then she'll, she'll kick her computer or reboot her phone and it comes back in when you're live, you know, those things can happen, but I think it sort of makes the show unique, you know, when you do shows live, as she mentioned, some of the interesting things that can happen when you're live on stage, those things can happen on television, radio, on the internet. And believe me, I've been there, uh, when things have happened that are crazy on television, radio, and the internet. So she'll reboot. Again, I had an opportunity to see them recently. I, I've known them for years, but see them recently uh, at the Mohegan Sun Arena. Matter of fact, this evening, 
when we were at the Celtic Woman 20th Anniversary Tour concert was the night after we saw Tony Orlando's finale concert after his 60 year career performing. So we were there both nights and just such a delight. Want to remind you too, that they are on tour. She'll try to get back in. Um, and she's going to be back on our show too. All of the ladies are here on the show. 20th anniversary tour. There are tickets still available. You can go to the website. It's a great show. Again, I've been there. Don't forget the album. It's a celebrated album that everybody's talking about. It's going to be a collector's item for sure. You know what's one of the great things, again, about having the various ladies from Celtic Woman on our show? As you can see, they're all talented individually, but they also do have this wonderful appreciation for their fans, very much so, and for one another, for the musicians, for the dancers, for everything. And, and you see the fun that they have. Uh, they tease each other. And then, yes, they come out with um, some of the other elements and, and packed, packed house everywhere they go. If you want, you know, if you've been very, if life has been a little crazy, maybe for you, perhaps maybe uh, you're like, gee, is there anything nice going on anymore? Is everything always negative? Is everything always not so happy, go lucky? Go to a Celtic woman concert. It will perk up your day. Uh, the music, the musicianship, the vocal prowess that each of the ladies have, of course, Tara and the fabulous fiddle and violin, you will just really feel so good. You'll also, at many, many moments, you'll be on your feet dancing. You'll be clapping, uh, cheering. They encourage that as well. As uh, Marie said, they have a raucous time sometimes. Uh, and these are some of my own personal photos, again, that we're sharing from when I was at their 20th anniversary tour concert. Really something quite special. Really absolutely special. And uh, and she, she is a trooper, and she's back. <laughs> we were just going through some photos. Oh, I was kind of waiting for the Wi-Fi to come back. It just completely went. There was nothing. It went. So the Wi-Fi is uh, no-fi. <laughs> no-fi. No-fi, but I, I knew you'd be back. And uh, we were just showing some of the photos from the, the 20th oh. anniversary. You were starting to say, because um, I know you have to go soon, because you got to go into hair and makeup, which, I mean, you look like you've already done that. But <laughs> <laughs> um, what people can expect when they come? What do you hope they're left with when they come to the 20th anniversary concert or any of the Celtic woman performances? We really want to take people on a journey. I think that's the most important thing. There's a beautiful quote from Brian Friel, the wonderful Irish um, playwright who said, you know, the most important thing um, about telling a story is bringing people on a journey. You take them here, you bring them there, you bring them down here, you bring them back up again. So that is the arc of what a Celtic woman show really feels like. You know, there's completely joyous moments and then there's also very, very still, quiet, poignant yes. moments. And yeah. Danny raised me up and then it obviously gets big. Um, but there's everything in a Celtic woman show. Bagpipers, Ellen pipes, percussion, dancers, we all come together, we dance, we sing, but then there's also those very still, um, you know, meditative. Poignant moments, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you raise me up and Danny boy, when those are happening, I mean, I don't want to give too much away because I know there's surprises for people that haven't been yet. Uh, there isn't, you know, a dry eye in the house. I think everybody is so moved. And, you know, and there are certain songs they they love hearing you guys do, right? You, there's, you're bringing out new stuff and, and celebrating some of the real traditional Irish music. But there are a few that they have their fingers crossed you're going to perform and they request that they want you to perform as well, right? Yeah, and we would never, we're not those artists that are not going to sing, you know, the classic Celtic woman songs. We very much know that people want to hear those songs and they're so important to why we're still here 20 years on. So listen, we could never do a show without Danny Boy, The Parting Glass, You Raise Me Up. I mean, there's just some standards in there that you will 100% hear. Amazing Grace is another one. Um, and then there's new stuff as well because why I talk about this show is that it's 
we're tipping our hat to the past, but waving hello to the future. And so we've got our classics in there, but we also have a new repertoire that makes us excited about the next 20 years of Celtic Woman. And we'll be there supporting you. This was so great. I know you have to dash off to hair and makeup because you guys are on stage. This was awesome. Your debut on the Gym Masters show oh. live entertainment lifestyle celebrity talk show series. Uh, loved having you here. I realize you're busy and you, you reserve this time to come on our show to talk about some of your background, your passions, your love of the music, your love of life, what it's all about. You're very grounded. You understand the human side of performance, but also it sounds like you've really uh, grown not only as an artist, but even yourself personally, and you share that with the world. And I think that's so beautiful. We're going to keep the porch light on for you, my friend. You are absolutely welcome. Like I say to everybody, you have a home here. Come back and see us again. And I really hope you enjoyed the time with me, Maraid, as much as I have with you on this episode of our show. Oh, I really have. And I'm just so happy that I finally was able to come on. I've been wanting to come on for ages. So thanks for having me. Oh, the pleasure is all mine. Say hello to uh, Ronan as well and to the ladies and continued success. Happy 20th anniversary once again to you and Celtic Woman and give everybody my best and uh, we'll see you again real soon, okay? Brilliant. Thank you so much. Bye. S safe travels. All right. Bye-bye now. <laughs> Bye. She did a high pitch too when she did that. Bye. See, she even sang a little bit there for you. Um, they're very busy. She is literally, I think they're in a hotel room or something there in Indiana because they are performing um, on stage tonight uh, at the time of this uh, live show. And it's really something very, very cool. And you will have a good time if you get a chance to get their tickets. Again, we were there celebrating their 20th anniversary tour just recently a couple of weeks ago at mohegan sun arena and that is a fantastic place on the east coast between new york and boston and connecticut that already happens but you can go to their website celticwoman.com to learn more and of course Marie is on all social media as is celtic woman you can find them all on social media as well terrific friends of mine terrific friends of our show and again, I've had this wonderful and very beautiful friendship with the management team, the PR team, everybody from the ladies themselves over the years from Celtic Woman and, uh, and the guys from Celtic Thunder. And it's really amazing. So, so honored to have each of them on our show as they come along to say hello and stop by. And when I get a chance to see them on stage and um, really, really cool. It's such a beautiful thing. So we appreciate Marie Carlin for joining us here on the show. And uh, yeah, she was mentioning Ronan, uh, her husband Ronan. Uh, Scalard is now part of Celtic Thunder, which is great. You may remember he was a guest on our show. If you want to um, see any of the past episodes of our series, there's almost 1,200 plus of them. They're all archived on our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. But also, if you want to see past episodes where we've had previous guests from Celtic Woman, uh, almost all of them have been here. Lynn Hillary's been here, and Alex Sharp's been here, and Megan Walsh, and Marae Nesbitt several times. Lisa Kelly's been here. Ola Fallon's been here. Chloe Agnew's been here. Um, all. It's really amazing. Um, uh, past and present. You can check all those uh, episodes out on our YouTube channel and uh, scroll. We archive everything as well. And if you enjoyed this episode, well, we invite you to come back and see us as well. We actually have two shows today. I have another show coming up tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern with a fabulous guest. So check our YouTube channel out for that. But boy, we thank Marie Carlin for stopping by the Gym Masters Show, Entertainment Lifestyle Celebrity Talk Show Series. Update us on the 20th anniversary tour celebration of Celtic Woman. It really is hard to believe that it's been 20 years. I've known them that long, but it's hard to believe 20 years have gone by in what I always say is a New York minute. Fast, lickety split. And, um, and they're celebrating it in style. And if you want to get tickets, want to learn more, get the album, DVDs, anything from Celtic Woman, just go to their website and everything is there for you. All the information about the shows, the tour, and uh, of course, the, uh, the music itself you might want to add to your collection. So if you've seen them on TV over the years, 
I, it was really amazing. It was a one night only situation in Ireland. David Downs, the creator of, and I interviewed him too, on uh, public television here in America, uh, was the creator of Celtic Woman 20 years ago. And it was a one night only performance in Ireland. And then uh, public television got a hold of that and st started airing specials and boom, look what happened. And they are loved around the world, not just here in America, but uh, you know, we have uh, folks that are watching right now. We say hello to everybody that's watching in South America, Brazil and Chile, Argentina, all throughout South America. They have super fans here in North America and America, as well as Canada. And we say hello to everybody that's watching right now uh, from America and Canada and Mexico. We say hello to all of our friends watching live right now in Europe. We've seen a number of folks commenting, watching from France and other locales, everybody watching in Europe, as well as uh, Asia, Africa, Australia, New Zealand. We say hello to all of you as you uh, watch and enjoy Celtic Woman and Maraid Carlin and us here on the Gym Masters Show. We love putting these shows together for all of you and celebrating great music, great artists, and not just music, our show has something for everybody. We have guests from all different backgrounds of life uh, that we celebrate here. If you enjoyed this episode, we encourage, welcome, and thank you so much for giving this episode a thumbs up like on our YouTube channel. Click the like thumbs up button. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV, for more episodes. That really helps our show grow. Leave a comment on the YouTube channel underneath this episode. And don't forget, you can share the episode link on your social media as well for that. We thank you so very much for watching, celebrating, enjoying what we're doing here on this fun celebrity talk show series, The Gym Masters Show. Like, comment, subscribe, share, and we thank you so very, very much. I am your host, Jim Masters. It's always a pleasure to be in your good company. We thank you for being with us as well. We thank Maraid for joining us here. This again was her very first time on our series and it won't be the last and it was a pleasure. She uh, has hair and makeup uh, that she's in right now getting ready for the performance that's coming up. So you guys are fantastic. And thanks again for all of these great uh, comments from all of so many great people that are watching from around the world and uh, nice to see all of you here and yeah double feature day or as we call it up here double lovety day when we have more than one show for everybody that's watching around the world and we've heard from so many of you during the live show feel free to contact us uh you know in the uh comments section on our youtube channel you can also find me on social media on facebook Twitter, which is now X, and also Instagram. Follow and like. Come see me there on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, X, at Gym Masters TV. Uh, we love to see you there as well. And of course, our YouTube channel, where all of these episodes are, is Gym Masters TV. And again, there's the website for Celtic Woman, CelticWoman.com. What a great conversation, some behind the scenes stories uh, of how Marie got involved in music and the incredible things that have happened to her in her life at such an early age and continue to blossom. And uh, we're very, very happy for her and for everybody at Celtic Woman. So once again, happy anniversary, Celtic Woman, 20 years of great music and entertainment and really something special. And we thank Maraid for being here as well. So Thank you for being here as well. I'm your host, Jim Masters. We appreciate you being here. Spread the word. Don't keep it a secret. Tell everybody you know about the Jim Masters Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Celebrity Talk Show Series. It's a great place to come, to feel good, to be connected, have good conversations, entertainment. And when we're live, anything can happen. <laughs> anything can happen. All right. We love you all. Don't forget to take care of one another. Be good to one another and love one another. And don't forget to take care of yourself. Be good to yourself and love yourself as well. I have to have some lunch. It's the middle of the day. And then I'm on the radio with a radio show and then we're prepping for a TV shoot tomorrow. And then we're back here tonight with another amazing guest, Xenia. She's a fabulous performer. She's going to join us for those that are watching live. If you're watching this later and you're not watching live, don't worry about it. You'll be able to see this uh, episode recorded. Matter of fact, this episode you're watching right now with Marie Carlin is now recorded and you can see it again uh, on our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. All right. With all of that said and done, 
We love you. We appreciate you being here. We thank you. Come see us again right here on what it says behind me, The Jim Masters Show. It's always a pleasure to have you here. Be well, gang. Take care. See you on the next one. I'll keep the porch light on for you, too. Cheers. <laughs>